Okay, welcome to this episode and um, I'm continuing from where I left off in the previous video and uh, as you can see the server we started in the previous video is still running. What do I want to teach you? I want to teach you another way of um, registering your route handlers, okay? This is the beauty of Flask. It doesn't tie your hands. It's not like you are chained. You have to do things in a particular way to get them to work. No, it gives you the flexibility. You know, the, the, the language you choose to build a system has a great effect on how well you can do. If you choose the wrong language for the wrong job, you are going to pay for it dearly. And I am um, in no way saying that Python is the best language for everything. No. If the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem appears to you as a nail. It is good as a programmer to learn so many things so that you know the right tool to choose for the right job. But I mean, Python is a flexible language. It's a sweet language. It is concise. And so it doesn't make sense to build a framework from such a language and make things complex. And Flask does this so well. So what am I going to show you? Another way to register your route handlers and you decide which one you love okay so previously what we did was you create a flask instance and then you use the route decorator this route here because of the ads we call it decorator so you use the app dot route decorator to specify the url and then you define the function you want to invoke in response to a request that comes to that URL. So all that line six to seven is stating is that if I visit the roots of my web application, then I want you to invoke the function index. And what Flask does is that whatever um, um, data you return from your function is going to be sent back to the client as the response. This is just beautiful, okay? Fun. And then on line 10, we use the same route decorator to define an endpoint called greet. And um, we say return good morning, and that's it. But then there is another way of registering your route and route handlers, okay? To show you that, I'm going to do away with this. And um, let's say we are building a web application that says good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the endpoint that you visited. Okay, so let's define our functions first. So I said def um, Morgan. I mean, I'm just playing here. I'm just using German West because I'm learning German and um, um, I, I, I just want to use it. Okay, so Morgan and I would say return goods and morgan okay and then to say afternoon you say tag so i say dev tag and i'll say return sorry good in tag okay and evening is abend so i'll say dev to death what happened I don't know if I spelled it correctly it doesn't feel right yeah good in the abend I'll say return good in abend okay now how do I make these functions available so that when I visit some URLs in my application, these functions are going to be called and the value they return are going to be sent back to um, the client as a response. Easy peasy. Let's go to the slice and I'll show you the, the name of the function and um, the parameters that it expects you to provide. So, the name of the function is add URL rule. See how beautifully it has been named. You are basically adding a URL rule and that is what it does, okay? The first parameter is the path, that is the specific URL 
that you want users to visit. The second parameter is called the endpoint name. We will go into other videos where I will show you the magic of using this endpoint name. But for now, I will tell you just use um, the name of your function as a string. It helps to do um, resolving of URL and generating of URLs when it comes to creating links in web pages. I will explain that, I promise you. And then the third argument is the function that you want to invoke when users visit this path. Let me take it again. So the path is the specific URL that you want people to visit. The second is a name you will use to resolve between your URLs and then the view functions. And then the view function here is the function that you want to invoke in response to any request that comes to the path, okay? So let's go back to our code. And then I'm going to show you how you can use this to register your route handlers. Okay, so I come here and then I would say app.add URL rule. And if you're using a good tester data, you should have IntelliSense. Add URL rule. And I'll say if somebody visits my site and goes to Morgan, I'm going to give it the name of Morgan. I will explain to you. And then I want you to invoke the function Morgan. Mind you, there is no relationship between the Morgan here, the Morgan here, and the Morgan here. It just feels right for me to, I mean, be consistent. I can call this morning or A, B, C, D. I can call this S, Y, Z, K. And this should be the name of the function that you want to invoke. And remember, you do not want to invoke the function yourself. So I have not added the bracket. I am not calling it. You just specify the name of the function. And Flask is going to be responsible for calling this function Morgan, which is up here between line 5 and 6, whenever somebody visits the slash Morgan. Okay? Let's do the same for um, tag. So I'll say, if I go to tag, I want you to call the tag function. And then I'll say app.add rule. And I'll say if I go to abend, I want to give it the name of abend. And I want you to call the function abend. Cool. Okay. So let's go into the terminal. Kill the server that is already running because I didn't enable debug mode. Otherwise, it would have restarted for me. Let me clear the screen and then I will start it again. Awesome. So now our server is running perfectly. Let's come into the browser and then over here we will say Morgan. Yay! Whoa, I didn't spell my Morgan correctly, but I mean, it's all right. This is not a German lesson. So you get your Guten Morgan and let's go to tag. Guten tag and let's go to abend why do i always spell this wrongly and then you have your guten abend okay so i mean there's a choice you have to make between using the decorator to register your route and route handlers or using the add url rule and um I will tell you what is conventional. The conventional is to use the decorator, okay? But you might run into situations where you want to do things dynamically and the decorator is not a perfect fit for that. There are times where you want to generate route and route handlers dynamically. And um, it is just not a solution for that. So know when to use this, but I promise you 90% of the time, um, the the creator is going to do a good job for you okay so i believe you understand it if you don't understand anything leave your comment and i promise you prompt responses as soon as possible now to show you that there is no correlation between the path name the then uh, the endpoint name and the function name i'm actually going to change this to be an english variant okay so i'll say morning 
I will say afternoon and I will say evening. Let's save this and it's not going to risk that because I don't have debug mode. I'll kill the server and I'll start it again. So now I come here. If I go to Abend, I should not see anything because I don't have I don't have anything slash Abend in my code. I have morning, afternoon, and evening. Okay, and you can see that the server is telling me 404. Uh, it has no idea what I'm talking about. So let me come here and say morning. You see, and then I will come here and say afternoon. Sorry, you see. And I will come here and I will say evening. See, so this is the whole idea of um, um, having another way of registering your route and route handlers. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. And I will see you in the next video.